Hello neighbors, it's me, Baphomet. You've summoned me to be your guide to the wonderful world of Satanism. Here, all of your questions are answered, and we prove that just because you're unholy doesn't mean you also can't be wholesome. You know, when people recognize me in public, they have all kinds of questions. Just what the heck is a Baphomet? And what's Baphomet got to do with Satanism? Well, I'm here to give you all the juicy details. Let's take a little trip down memory lane. The name Baphomet dates back to 1312, when King Philip IV of France rounded up all the Holy Knights Templar and accused them of idolatry. The Pope charged the Knights with worshipping an idol called Baphomet, which historians sometimes describe as a mummified head, or sometimes as a cat. In his book, The Knights Templar, historian Peter Partner says that the word Baphomet might actually have meant Muhammad, and that the Templars were actually accused of apostasy instead of devil worship. But most people remember the idolatry story instead, probably because it has a kitty in it. The image we usually call Baphomet today comes from French occultist Eliphas Levi's 1856 book, Ritual of High Magic. Also called the Sabbatic Goat, or Goat of Mendez, Levi modeled his illustration partly on popular tarot card illustrations of the devil and magician cards, both of which make your game of Go Fish really, really complicated, by the way. Levi probably didn't mean for the Baphomet to represent the devil, or at least not just the devil as we know him. In Doctrine of High Magic, he calls it a pantheistic and magical figure of the absolute. The torch placed between the two horns represents the equilibrating intelligence. The goat's head represents the inclusive responsibility of matter and the expiation of bodily sins, which are all words that make total sense to me. The lower part of the body is veiled, portraying the mysteries of universal generation, which is expressed solely by the symbol of the caduceus. That's the thing here with the adorable snakes. On its forehead, between the horns and beneath the torch is the sign of the pentagram, symbol of human intelligence. To Levi, Baphomet represented enlightenment, equilibrium, and ancient mystery. And personally, I happen to think it's completely adorable, too. Look at the little fuzzy goat ears! In the late 19th century, smear writer Leo Taxel wrote a scandalous book claiming that French Freemasons were actually devil worshippers. And he put poor Baphomet right on the cover. After a couple more shocking books of Parisian Satanism, in 1897, he announced at a press conference that he had made the whole thing up. As one Paris newspaper put it, in his eyes, glory consists of being doubly denounced, discredited, burned in all camps, and hearing himself referred to as an unworldly crook. Infamous 20th century English occultist, Aleister Crowley, took up an interest in Baphomet too. Crowley was more of a bohemian magician than a Satanist, but because of his scandalous reputation and sacrilegious attitudes, the public firmly associated him with devil worship. In his book, Magic in Theory and Practice, Crowley wrote, Satan is not the enemy of man. He bade know thyself and taught initiation, and his emblem is Baphomet, hieroglyph of arcane perfection. Mr. Crowley, what went on in your head? By the middle of the 20th century, writers like alarmist pulp author Dennis Wheatley were using Baphomet as an avatar for Satan in fictional tales of black magic. In the 1968 adaption of Wheatley's The Devil Rides Out, one-time Dracula actor Christopher Lee refers to the goat of Mendez as the devil himself. Another sad chapter of goat exploitation in cinema. Along the way, real Satanists, especially those with an interest in occultism, adapted Baphomet as their own symbol too. Baphomet has been in the news an awful lot lately. In 2015, artist Mark Porter designed an eight-foot-tall bronze Baphomet monument for the Satanic Temple, who attempted to install it at the Oklahoma State Capitol to counter a nearby monument depicting the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Since courts ordered the commandments taken down for violating the U.S. Constitution's First Amendment Clause against state religion, TST dedicated the finished monument at a party in Detroit instead, and then moved it to their headquarters in Salem. In 2018, they briefly planted it in front of another Ten Commandments monument at the Arkansas State Capitol as a protest. With Baphomet racking up all those frequent flyer miles, some people think that there are Baphomet statues all over the country, but it's actually just the same one every time. Just like most magic, it's all an illusion.
In 2018, Baphomet made headlines again with the Netflix show The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, featuring a statue that looked almost exactly like Porter's, even down to the two kid sidekicks. TST sued Warner Brothers for stealing their copyrighted design and eventually settled the suit out of court. We hear Hell has some pretty good lawyers in it, so it's hard to beat the devil for litigation. These days, Satanists, art lovers, and goat fanciers alike can find Baphomet idols and images for sale all over the country. These can be an inspiring addition to your home altar or a way to sneak around your landlord's no goats in the house policy. So next time you spot a Baphomet in your own state capital, you'll know the whole inside story. As for me, I'm more of a homebody these days, but I can always be convinced to make a public appearance for my true fans. Until next time, keep living deliciously.